We have our fourth mid-season manager firing in Major League Baseball. This time the Rangers firing Chris Woodward in his fourth season with the club. That's been confirmed by our MLB insider Jim Bowden. The Rangers coming off a 102 loss season last year. Spent a ton of money in the offseason. About more than a half billion dollars in the offseason bringing in guys like Corey Seager and Marcus Simeon. But they've really underachieved. Woodward, uh, one of the worst records in baseball since he took over ahead of the 2019 season. And one of the main issues this season, one-run games. They are 6-24 and 24 in one-run games this year. That is why they are way, way out of the playoff race at 51-63. and 63. Let's bring in David Sampson and Matt Snyder here on HQ to discuss the firing of Chris Woodward. David, I'll, I'll start with you. Uh, interesting timing. They did just win back-to-back -back games over the weekend. Why now? Yeah, there's no particular reason other than John Daniels and Chris Young thought that they were not going to move forward with Chris Woodward. They gave him an extension, so he was signed through next season. But Woodward didn't sign Simeon and overpay for him and for Seager. The Texas Rangers were not built to win in the AL West. They were just deluded into thinking by winning the offseason that they would have a better actual season. And you're not going to turn around this year making a firing in August. And you're not getting ready for next year because your roster is going to be different. So unless there's something acute that we don't know about, the timing of this firing makes zero sense. Yeah, I have to agree. It was weird. I mean, it's, when when somebody texted me and said, hey, we need you on for breaking news for Woodward being fired, I was like, what? why? They're not a playoff contender. It's not like they're in the middle of this season-altering losing streak like the Angels when they fired Joe Madden or even the Phillies when they fired Girardi and they were trying to turn things around. It was weird. Uh, maybe a little face-saving measure from the front office because it is – as David alluded to, it's it, the roster. It was half measures in the offseason. It was to go out and sign not just Seager and Simeon, but they added Cole Calhoun and John Gray. Not really enough there from a roster that had been completely gutted and didn't have a ton coming up from the farm. So it's really almost as good as you could have hoped here with this kind of a, a roster that they put together. The only thing is that I could come up with is, and again, the timing doesn't make sense, but you mentioned the 6-24 and 24 record in one-run games. If they only, if they, let's say we made that 15 and 15, change the record around by nine games in each way, they'd actually be right there in the playoff picture. So I guess there's an argument to be made that if you're six and 24 in one run games and you had a better manager, you'd be better in one run games. But uh, that's a tall order to make that argument. Yeah, if they, had they won nine more games, they would only be a half game out of the final playoff spot in the American League. David, you, you guys both, Matt, too, have mentioned the roster and what they did. Spent a lot of money in the offseason. That doesn't necessarily mean they spent it the right way. How are things going to change, and what questions will they have this offseason roster-wise? Well, I think the owners have to decide, are they going to try to be like the Astros? Because they've never really been willing to do a full rebuild. They've never been able to have the patience to see it through. They did that spending like drunken sailors last offseason, and they just did not spend wisely paying at the top of the market for two shortstops. As you recall, now one gets to play second base. But at the end of the day, pitching is what wins in this league pitching and patience and if they want to be like the Astros and have a chance to catch the Astros in that division they are have to change the way they do business and that starts at the top with ownership and I'm not convinced in any way that John Daniels or Chris Young has enough pull in that organization to change the way things are run yeah it might have been the wrong guy too I mean let, let's be honest John Daniels bought himself a ton of credit here. The Rangers had never been to the World Series before he took over. They went two years in a row in 2010 and 2011. They, you could argue they should have won the World Series in 2011 if they just made a defensive substitution in right field in Game 6. We don't need to relive that. But since then, it's just kind of been rolling downhill for John Daniels in this organization and uh, it seems like the last-ditch effort to kind of rectify things was to throw money at the problem in the offseason and uh, just adding two guys, the caliber of Simeon Seager, which Seager's still in the middle of his prime, and it's always possible Simeon would bounce back and have a big year again next year. They just don't have enough around them. I, I mean, I guess in the rotation around John Gray and Dane Dunning, you could say maybe they need to add a couple arms there going into next year. I'm trying to be as optimistic as possible. It just, if you're going to continue to throw money at it, I don't know if they have enough to completely solve the roster, they don't have enough in prospect currency to trade a bunch of that off for big league talent either. 
they're in a tough spot. So it, it uh, like I said earlier, the firing of the manager almost seems like a face saving measure by the front office in, in order to tell ownership, hey, we weren't the biggest problem this year. It was the manager. Now we're going to go out and get the right manager. Give us another year here. Rangers pulling the plug on Chris Woodward midway through his fourth season. His first season was his best when he won 78 games, but since then winning at about a 40% clip, and that just does not cut it. David, Matt, thank you so much for your time here on HQ. The fourth manager fired midway through this season, joining Joe Girardi of the Phillies, Joe Madden of the Angels, and Charlie Montoyo of the Blue Jays. Much more on this, I would presume, on the very latest Nothing Personal podcast with David Sampson. Download and follow wherever you like to get your audio. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.